So, hello, welcome to this session on trade wars, conflicts, and global governance. My name is Terry Martin. I'm a news anchor with Germany's foreign broadcasting service, Deutsche Welle. And it's my great pleasure to moderate this session today. I want to thank the Aspen Institute and the German Marshall Fund of Bucharest for having me. So, we're talking about trade policy, right? Trade policy is also foreign policy, of course. It is used as a foreign policy tool. Sometimes it's used as a foreign policy weapon. Uh, just ask anyone who lives in Russia or Iran when it comes to sanctions or tariffs and how these affect countries uh, and people and businesses who live there. So trade policy is foreign policy, so we're going to be talking about that uh, over the next hour or so. I've been told to keep this a little shorter. I was uh, taken to lunch, um, almost against my will, but it was also a fruitful experience, I assure you. Anyway, um, right now we are witnessing a conflict of monumental proportions, and we know exactly what we're talking about. It was a topic at lunch again, too. It's a, it's a topic at these forums all over the world right now, and that is the confrontation between the United States and China. Now, to some degree, that conflict is a systemic geopolitical confrontation, uh, but its most prominent manifestation right now is the trade war. I will call it a trade war. Some might prefer to call it something else, but uh, it is essentially a trade war. Now, that trade war is affecting the world co economy already. Uh, countries around the world, governments around the world, are already, and, and institutions who track the global economy, are already adjusting their, their forecasts, and it's being felt in different ways. Um, Peanut butter. You know, I'm, I, I love peanut butter. Uh, we're seeing uh, just, a, just even in the conflict between the United States and Europe, uh, peanut butter is on that list, right, of sanctioned items. So peanut butter is becoming more difficult for me to get, and that is a serious thing indeed. Um, well, so we're talking about the trade war affecting the world economy. It's disrupting supply chains in ways I hope we're going to hear more about uh, over the next hour. And when you disrupt supply chains, a lot of things happen. It has a knock-on effect. It, just, it doesn't just affect the businesses involved, of course. It affects uh, everything that is dependent on those businesses, like the people who work, for example. And it creates a, an atmosphere of deep uncertainty and anxiety, which is what we're experiencing right now. This whole forum kicked off with the notion that we are still in a, even deeper than a year ago into a pattern of disruption and uncertainty, uh, and we don't really know where this is going. So I'm, I'm hoping we'll get a little bit of clarity today, uh, not just on the conflict between China and the United States, but also on other conflicts, other trade conflicts. We have uh, representatives from the UK, from China and Japan, with us, I'm going to introduce them right now, and we'll get things kicked off. Just, a, just a one little warning, uh, something to have in the back of your mind. We will be inviting questions from you uh, towards the end, the last 20 minutes or so. We want to open it up for questions, so you can begin to already ruminate and think about what questions you might want to put to the panelists. So uh, let's get underway. It's my great pleasure to introduce uh, the three panelists. I'll just invite you to come up here in whatever order you wish, uh, starting with uh, Shi Shinichi Nakabayashi. He is director for Japan at uh, the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development. We also have with us Kerry Brown, director of the Lao China Institute at King's College London. And... And our third panelist, uh, coming all the way from China, is Jin Kanrong, Associate Dean of the School of International Studies at Renmin University in China. Uh, first of all, a warm round of applause for our panelists. Thank you for being with us. Now, we've had a bit of correspondence before we showed up here in Bucharest, and I, um, I gave the panelists a few questions to reflect on. And I'd like to begin by putting the, uh, the first big picture question to our uh, panelists, and you guys can take about five to seven minutes each maybe to answer these. And the big picture question is, 
What do current trade wars and conflicts tell us about the global economic and political order and about global governance? So that's basically the title of our shop, so you can go wherever you want with that. Why don't we start right here to, to my right then, uh, if you don't mind, Dr. Jin. Thank you, Ms. Martin. Uh, thanks for the host of this event. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be here. Uh, this is my first time uh, to be here. Um, I used to be trained as a student of American uh, politics. Uh, so next year, I will get a lot of interview uh, to predict uh, who will be the next president of the United States. <laughs> um, uh, for me, I think the most uh, important challenge for today's world is that we, we are facing the deficit of global governance. Uh, China benefited from globalization a lot in the past four decades. Uh, many people believe China is uh, one of the countries uh, benefit most. Uh, we appreciate this process. But very unfortunately now, this uh, process uh, reversed to some extent. Um, the fact is that uh, there are more global challenge uh, occurred now, uh, including climate change. Uh, so the demand for uh, demand for global governance keep rising, but on the other side, the supply of global governance uh, to some extent it decreased. Uh, the one reason is that the U.S. don't want to offer that supply. U.S. still owns enough resources, but become very selfish, right? The U.S. administration now dominant by, you know, nationalism, American first, buy America, hire America, just like, uh, you know, uh, third world um, political leader, right? So U.S. still owns resources, but they don't want to spend money. Uh, so U.S. become selfish, uh, and the EU, EU still, still uh, build very strong will to offer this uh, global governance, but the uh, EU has its problem, right? You, you become weak uh, after the Brexit. Uh, so, so that's the problem. Uh, used to be, we have to say, uh, the world benefit from, from the supply of global governance, mainly from U.S. and EU, but now we see the supply side, they don't want to supply. <laughs> and China wants so, to supply. So when you're talking about the supply, you're talking about global governance? Global so governance. They're not supplying, gov okay, just want you, to be clear you, about that. You, you see the, the problem of logic, you know, demand keep rising and the supply very hesitate, right? Uh, China want to join in, uh, so we offer the one build, one road initiative, but you guys are very hesitate to support China. When you say right. you guys, you mean <laughs> EU <laughs> and the uh, US. Okay. 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 Right? <laughs> and okay. uh, some people even demoralize Belt and Road Initiative. That's ridiculous. That's irresponsible for the global governance. Right? So that's uh, one concern of mine, uh, the deficit of global governance. Uh, second uh, concern definitely relating with US-China relations. I have to say, now and in the future, the U.S.-China relations is most important bilateral tie for China, right? We do uh, appreciate the benefit that resulted from U.S.-China relations in the past uh, four decades after the normalization. We benefit a lot. We appreciate that. Uh, but unfortunately, U.S.-China relations will enter a quite a long uh, bumpy period, at least last for one decade. We have to face in this new reality. Um, because U.S. now define China as a, you know, sort of, sort of revisionist country, and they consider uh, terrorism not that uh, important threat, but, uh, you know, competition among big powers are now ranking number one. And now they have two adversaries, Russia under the Putin the Great, and uh, China <laughs> and our current leader, right? <laughs> but uh, from long-term viewpoint, uh, they believe uh, their, their only adversary should be China because Russia fell into so-called resources curve, re resources trap already, right? So from long-term viewpoint, Russia will be not that strong uh, economically. 
so they put China on the very uh, top uh, position of adversary. That's not good, no good for U.S.-China relations, right? And uh, as all we know, U.S. people are uh, easy to, they're not very good at thinking, you know. As for thinking, no good as a European uh, counterpart, but they are very good at action, right? So after they defined China as a revisionist country, uh, they immediately launched a trade war. Uh, actually, our uh, official media not use term trade war. We use term more in more trade friction. Uh, we are very cautious. Uh, we don't want to uh, exaggerate the, 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 the seriousness of the situation. Uh, so, so we see now the U.S.-China relations deteriorated uh, since spring last year, right? Uh, but as for uh, the trade friction or trade war, um, I don't worry that much. I tend to believe next month, when we have APEC summit in Chile, right, uh, we will have a partial deal. Uh, because what? Because one side China compromise a lot. Uh, China really don't want to have a trade war. So China did its best to avoid that. Uh, as I know, we compromised 80 percentage. Okay. But uh, the problem is on US side, they want to have a 100 percentage deal. Right? That's ridiculous. You know? <laughs> they can never get that. Their choice is zero and 80, okay. right? And uh, I think uh, uh, at uh, Chile, uh, President Trump will accept an 80 percentage deal. Okay. Because uh, he needs uh, need a diplomatic victory. Actually, after the three years ruling, he got nothing in foreign policy. You know, Dr. North Jen? Korea he feared, Iran feared, Venezuela feared, Syria feared, Ukraine feared. Zero, you know. <laughs> so he need uh, something to show to his audience. He he get something, you know. So that's why I said, uh, as for uh, trade war, don't worry. We will have a partial deal. Uh, okay. But, uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Dr. Jin. I'm afraid I'm going to have to. Okay. Have to, you, we're going to come back to you. Don't worry. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. It's you. it's not. You know, this is going to be a discussion, so it's going to go around, and everybody will get uh, time to 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 say. So just a, a quick summary of what you had to say there. The um, so. The, China is looking for, to Europe and the rest of the world for more global governance, also from the U.S., uh, but Europe is weak, uh, the U.S. is selfish, and, uh, and China does see the prospect of a deal shaping up if the U.S. will just back away from its 100% uh, demands.